Our next award is in the category of physical rehabilitation. Sometimes the bad things that happen in our lives put us directly on the path to the best things that ever happened to us. An unfortunate reality is that the majority of people with disabilities do not have what many others take for granted. Many people with disabilities live alone in silence. The courage to come back for me is really the courage to continue, to continue living a full life. Tonight, we celebrate our triumphs over adversities, and tomorrow, we continue the pursuit of our dreams. But the important thing is, is that we love, and it's very important that we love one another. And tonight, I'm very happy to say that this room is filled with love. To present the award for physical rehabilitation, please welcome a generous Coast Mental Health supporter, Mary Wessing. This award recognizes a person who has endured major trauma and injury, which has required extensive physical rehabilitation and who has gone on to support and to inspire others. The air started coming out of my lungs. I could feel the uh, bubbles coming out left side of my mouth and I could feel the water coming in. All I remember is Isabel grabbed me and screamed help and uh, at that point I died. It was another beautiful day in paradise. They were on holiday in Hawaii. The sun was hot and Little Beach was busy and beautiful. Let's swim to cool off. The blissful sense of silky cool water on your skin, the push and pull of the pounding surf, a final dive through the waves like they had done together so many times, except this time he didn't surface. This time she had to drag him limp and losing life as she screamed for help. This time, everyone on the beach came running to help save the man who knew he was dying, but didn't yet know that his spine was damaged and that he was a complete quadriplegic. That man named Jim Ryan. Jim's wife, Isabel, and others managed to get Jim on shore. He was clinically dead, and lifeguards performing CPR were not sure he could be revived. The ambulance arrived as Isabel screamed, you can't die, you owe me 30 more years of marriage. He remembers thinking, he'd better stay. In the hospital, he learned his spine was damaged at the C4 level. That means he lost the use of 26 of his 30 vertebrae. He was unable to breathe. He had no movement below the shoulders. Suddenly, his life was going to be unlike anything he ever imagined. Jim is a pilot, a captain with WestJet. He was trained to work the problem. Just days after the accident, he was communicating using a rudimentary point to a letter to spell a word system. He was flown to Vancouver and almost died. On the plane, his breathing was so heavy that his oxygen supply was all but gone when the plane landed in Vancouver. And it was in Vancouver that Jim was told once and for all, you will never walk again, nor regain the movement in your hands and arms. You will be dependent on a ventilator for the rest of your life. And they believed it when they said it. But you see, they just didn't know the mountain of strength that is Jim Ryan. It took months, but Jim worked relentlessly to build up his muscles and six months later, he was able to breathe on his own. He was in Vancouver General Hospital for four months and then at GF Strong for a further five months. Jim could no longer dress himself or shave or feed himself or use the phone. He lost everything from the shoulders down. His mind works and not much else. That's devastating no matter what the circumstances. Yet through it all, Jim had only one thought, work the problem. Jim was learning a whole new way of living life. A state-of-the-art wheelchair allows him to use his head to control and steer it. Voice recognition technology allows him to write and communicate with the world. A special van allows him to travel. While he was still at GF Strong, he received a BC Rehabilitation Award for his remarkable courage, determination, and perseverance towards gaining independence. All this is incredible in itself, but the best part of the story is yet to come, and it begins with a visit from Rick Hansen. With Rick's visit, Jim agreed to be an ambassador for the Rick Hansen Foundation. A friend asked him to speak at the Rotary Club, and the result was not only changed minds, it also resulted in the city creating curb cuts where previously there had been none. 
Early in his recovery, Jim and his son began a Facebook page to connect with family, but today it has over 3,000 followers. He has spoken at the University of the Fraser Valley and at UBC. His lectures are attended by occupational therapists and kinesiology students, discussing his experiences and the needs of a quadriplegic in the healthcare system. He also teaches at GF Strong and works with WestJet, improving travel for disabled passengers. And at Christmas last year, to everyone's surprise but Jim's, he traveled back to Maui to thank the lifeguards who he credits, along with Isabel, for saving his life. He told them they were all his heroes. But heroes come in all different sizes, and there is no question that Jim is a hero in every sense of that word. A man for whom life changed in the blink of an eye, but this courageous man just worked the problem. I feel I have two challenges. One is accepting that I'm a quadriplegic because I still think I can get up and walk. And my other big challenge is to make sure my wife Isabel loves me. So everything else is a problem and problems can be solved. He is strong, he is loved, and he is giving back in ways we have only begun to enumerate. But if you add it all up, the sum total is this. Jim Ryan has the courage to come back. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 Courage to Come Back Award recipient for physical rehabilitation, Jim Ryan. Just takes me a moment to get into position, thanks. Uh, for the very first time, I've actually written down a speech. Normally, I can just wing it, but uh, I only have three minutes, apparently, so I <laughs> kept it short. And now I've realized I've made the font too small. <laughs> so we'll work through this, but anyways. <laughs> Thank you very much for this wonderful award. And thank you to Coast Mental Health for honoring me so well. I'd also like to thank the Chilliwack Rotary Club. They're the group that picked me uh, for, as their nomination for the award. I've said it many times and I'll say it again, I wouldn't be here without the tremendous support of my family and friends. They have done as much as I have to get me through this and make me the success that I am. Most of all, I want to thank my wife, Isabel, for her love and support. I'm going to cry now. <laughs> she saved me on the beach that day and has saved me every day since. Thirty-five years ago, I knocked on the door of a good friend, and her new roommate opened the door. It took me three years to convince the new roommate to marry me. <laughs> and I am thrilled every day that I knocked on that door. Thanks for holding that. <laughs> I'm somewhat overwhelmed uh, that people find me an inspiration. Truth be told, all I really see myself as a guy in a wheelchair trying to get through life. Since my accident, I've just simply tried to deal with the obstacles that have been put in front of me and move forward. Shortly after I returned home, a wise woman asked me what my biggest challenge in life is. It really caught me off guard, and I really had to think about my situation in life. 
I have come to the decision that I have both problems and challenges. And my video stole some of my thunder. <laughs> For me, problems are like speed bumps on the road. Some are big, some are small, some are easy to get over, and some take quite a while. But eventually you get over them, and yes, there's always another speed bump. I always say in hospital I had real, two really big speed bumps. One was learning how to communicate, and the other one was learning how to breathe. Learning how to breathe was a big problem. But we persevered, we made it through all those problems and many more, and they still keep coming down the road. As my video said, I really only have two challenges in life. One is the grim realization that in fact I am a quadriplegic. I really still don't believe it, and it's something I deal with every day. And the other one is making sure my wife, Isabel, knows how much I love her and how special she is to me. She is. She is by far the best uh, part of my life. The question is, I get asked the most since my accident, is how do I keep moving forward after such a terrible event? My answer is always the same. I really have no choice. I cannot go backwards in time and change what has happened. It is part of my life now, and while I still struggle to accept it, I have no choice but move forward and try to solve problems and be an asset to society and not a liability. I have suffered a terrible event in my life. My wife, Isabel, has, in every sense of the word, suffered a terrible event as well. My injury is very apparent. Isabel's is not. Many of you in this room and many of your friends and family have gone through terrible events in the past. While I can never forget what has happened to me, I must learn to live with it and try to move forward. It is now part of me. Some days I am angry or sad or depressed, but no matter what, time moves forward and so must I. In closing, I hope my actions and words will help everyone who has suffered terrible events in their past. We cannot forget or understand or even try to forgive what has happened in the past. But I hope, like me, that we can move forward and try to find the courage to come back. Thank you. That's okay.